Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going to share with you three things that I am changing in my lawn business for this upcoming season. Today's video is sponsored by Yardbook, which is the software I use to run my lawn care business. Check them out, yardbook.com. Alright, so things are always changing in business and I think as you progress in your business, one of the keys is being able to change when your circumstances around you change. So. Uh, I don't think I can necessarily do things the exact same way I've always been doing. For instance, I had a guy ask me yesterday, he said, Jason, uh, what do you think about door hangers as far as a way to, to get new customers if you're starting a brand new lawn business? I told him, I said, listen, I, I, I think they can work, but the return's not going to be great. I used to use door hangers a lot about 12 years ago, but you think of what's changed in the past 12 years. Again, it's not saying door hangers can't work, but how many more people are looking for a lawn care provider on the internet now than they were 12 years ago? Um, yes, the internet was around 12 years ago, but that people were not um, searching as much online as they are now. It continues to grow and grow and grow. So I pointed more towards social media and, and website and things like that. Well, this year in my lawn care business, I'm going to make some changes uh, based on some of the circumstances. So in no particular order, the three changes I'm making and start with number one is I'm going up on my prices, okay? Now this is, is sort of an obvious one. Ga gas prices are, are double what they were a year ago. And I'm doing weed control and fertilization. But if you're mowing, um, the cost of labor's gone up. Uh, the week, for us in weed control, the cost of our supplies are going up. The chemicals, the fertilizer, and they go up, you know, pretty much every year. But this year uh, and last year is significantly increased. So um, to not go up on your prices, ultimately you're going to be working for less profit than you were in years past, unless you're able to improve on other areas. And, and you can make up some of the difference, you know, having a tighter route and getting more customers. But oftentimes people end up adding more revenue and, and I'm wondering sometimes if their bottom line is any different than it was. So for me, it's a price increase is going to be very important this year. Now on doing that, I had a friend help me out and he, he encouraged me to this. Usually I put a, a ladder in the, the first year and give people opportunity to prepay with a 5% discount. Well, my friend who's been uh, in the same industry, he said, he, what he does, he finds that if you can get that letter, prepay letter out to him before uh, the holidays, the holiday shopping and all that, then you have a lot better chance of getting people to prepay, which makes a lot of sense. So I'm actually putting it out um, now, late, you know, in the fall, and letting them know a letter explaining the price increase, but then also give an option to prepay um, if they want to do that. And, and I'm, you know, leave a return envelope and try and encourage them to, to pay for the year if they want to go that route to mail a check back in. Uh, if they pay for the year with a credit card, I'm, I'm giving a 5% discount plus the credit card fees are almost 3%. So you're almost down 8% from the very get-go. So I'm trying to encourage them to pay for the year with a check if possible. And you may say, well, why would you give them a 5% discount to prepay? Well, uh, it does help cash flow. But for me, I, I, the, my cons logic behind this is, um, one, I don't have to deal with the billing if they prepay. But another thing is if I can get the money in January, then I have opportunity to invest that over the course of the year and hopefully earn more than 5% on that, on that money. All right, the second thing I'm changing, I alluded to this already, but I'm changing the way customers pay me. Seems like every year, one or two people cheat me out of the money, okay? And, it, and it's very small minority to do that, but it's not just those people that are aggravating. It's some of my good customers who in no way are trying to cheat me by any means, but they just live busy lives. And because they live busy lives, oftentimes they forget their invoice. Even though we send it to them through the software, the software sends them a reminder later. So here's the problem with this. So let's say I'm going to neighborhood A and I've got 15 customers and I want to do all 15 of them tomorrow. Well, I look at the software and what do you know? One of them has not paid. So I've got 14 on the schedule and now I'm left with a little bit of dilemma. This one that hasn't paid, what do I do? Do I skip them? Do I uh, try to send them a message and say, please pay, but then sometimes they don't pay right then and it's and I go and do the 14 yards that I, that I have got paid from. I skip that one and then three days later they pay. So I got to go back to that neighborhood to do that one yard. So I, I've kind of uh, gotten a little bit more firm with this. Let me give you an example. Last week I had a customer and he, he uh, didn't pay his bill and I text him and just not getting a response. And eventually, to be honest with you, I just texted him. I said, listen, I, it doesn't appear that this is going to work out. Tried calling him. Uh, it doesn't appear this is going to be a long-term fit. You and I, me, the lawn care provider, and you. Um, so I just let you know, if I don't hear from you, I'm going to take you off the schedule. Well, I get a call. 
He says, hey, I've been out of town. I'm just now getting these messages. And, uh, I, and I said, well, listen, I, I was in your neighborhood last week. I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not coming back kind of deal. I pick you up next round, you know, credit card on file or prepay only. So, um, and that gets my point. What I'm changing is I'm going to credit card on file or prepay only with a 5% discount. Now, is there gonna be any exceptions? Well, possibly a few if it's just an old person that just insists on paying with a check and, and says I can't pay for the year. So I, I, I may consider that, I don't know. Um, but for people like this that I'm constantly having to text and say, um, hey, I didn't get paid last time. Would you mind paying that bill? And then, So it, it's me taking more time. I've got to sit, I come home, from doing yards and I sit down and I'm looking for my schedule for tomorrow and oh, I gotta text this person because I didn't get paid last time. So it, I'm just kind of tired of that and I'm wanting to, to improve the way I, I do things to spend less time and less headaches and then uh, hopefully cut down. Now, you run the risk of having that declined credit card and you gotta message them about that. And you know, it's not like it's gonna be a perfect system. Um, but I do think it will be much improved and help me ultimately probably weed out some customers that I don't really need or not willing to do business my way. And I would encourage you to do this, guys. Make the customer conform to your style of business, okay? Help them understand you're not my only customer. I can't have a customized program for everybody. You want to leave it under the mat, the payment under the mat. You want to Venmo me, PayPal me, you know. Figure out how you want to be paid and give them those options. And, and stick with it, okay? If, if people are gonna make a big deal over credit card on file or prepaying for the year, and I wanna do Venmo, and I wanna do Cash Out, and I wanna do Zelle, and I wanna do, it's like, I, I, I'm not doing all that. It's like, this is how we're gonna get paid, and, and you say it politely, but um, it's okay if they're not a fit for your business. If It's okay if they wanna leave cash uh, under the, the doormat, and, and, and you don't want to accept that, then you just say, I'm sorry, I'm not the cash under the doormat kind of guy. Some of you may only want cash under the doormat. And the third thing I'm gonna mention that I'm changing this year, and this has to do with the prices going up, and particularly my, my supplies going up, I'm trying to be more selective on customers I take on. So yes, saying no more often, and I'm in particular gonna focus on smaller properties. So. During weed control and fertilization, I have kind of a sliding scale of, of prices. For a, a small yard, I may be getting $16 per thousand square feet, even more than that maybe in some situations. All the way down to maybe even as low as $5 per thousand square feet for a really big property. Well, inevitably, the, the chemical costs are, are gonna be less of a strain on you on those smaller properties. Now, it, it doesn't make sense to drive way out of your way to go do one small property, but if I've got a lot of 3,000 square foot properties and I'm getting 13 or $14 per thousand square feet, that's great for me, okay? I would rather personally have that with, with the cost of supplies going up than a 15,000 square foot property that I'm getting $6 per thousand or, or seven or whatever you want to charge, that's fine. So for me, I'm thinking I either got to go up on my, my higher, my larger properties to make them profitable, um, or I think what I'm going to do is really just target on those neighborhoods that have the small properties because I find those uh, more enjoyable anyway and more profitable. And something to consider if you're a solo operator, I, I think about sometimes hearing people that are uh, getting older and they talk about wanting a one level house. I don't want to walk up those stairs. For me, I'm thinking of, of making some changes in my business and trying to focus on small, flat yards, where in the past I would have maybe taken a, a large, hilly yard and, and been okay with that. But I'm saying, you know what? I really don't enjoy those as much. Uh, I've got a, I like where my business is. I, I definitely want to add more customers, but let me just make sure I'm adding the right customer. It's like if you've got a, a, a near championship level team, and I'm not saying I'm championship level or anything, but I'm saying if, if, you, if, you, if you have a, a near championship level team, you don't necessarily need to, to rethink your whole strategy and fire the coordinators and let's fire the coach and let's get all new players. You know, it's just like, I, I just want to tweak a few things, okay? I, I want to uh, maybe add a couple of key players on our team to help us get better next year, but we're not trying to start the whole thing over with, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to uh, maybe refine how I do things a little bit, add some new customers, but make sure they're in the areas that I want to work, the type of yards that I want to work with, not take on some 
huge project lawn that's going to take me forever to get fixed again uh, or just filled with tons of weeds that are going to be a huge burden or, or you know so anyway being more selective is the third change i'm making this year appreciate you guys watching the video i am uh, got a lot of things at lawncarelife.com including i'm doing i actually got a year-long mentorship opportunity uh, available on there I got weed control and fertilization academy if you're looking to start a weed control fertilization bit there's a lot of documents actually just it's for sale now on the website it's, i call it the weed control cheat sheet and it has a lot of herbicides it has um, the active ingredient has the rates per thousand the rate per acre save you a lot of time looking that stuff up uh, and it has some notes about that i'm still developing that but that is actually on lawncarelife.com as well thanks for watching i gotta get to work see ya